And it's time once again for the exciting adventures of power calculations. Today we're going to pick up where we left off, start with a nice series circuit example of a complex impedance circuit, figure out what the power is, take a look at the power triangle. So let's just dive right in, shall we? We'll start with a little source over here, feeding a one millihenry inductor and a 10 ohm resistor. We will say that our source is 10 volts peak. It's at a frequency of one kilohertz. And what we would like to do is determine the true power dissipated in the circuit, the apparent power, the reactive power, figure out the power factor, and also draw the power triangle for the circuit. So the very first thing we have to do here is turn that uh, react, uh, inductance value into a reactance value. So we can just use our straight formula where x sub l is equal to 2 pi fl. Put in 1 kilohertz and 1 millihenry. The millihenry and the k hertz, the millis k's cancel and we're left with just 6.283 ohms. Now this is just a series circuit, so the system impedance is simply 10 plus J 6.283, right, rounding that off a little bit. If we put that in polar form, that's equivalent to 11.81 magnitude at an angle of 32.1 degrees. All right, how do we go about finding the power? Well, in a circuit like this, a series circuit, probably the fastest way is to do an I squared approach. You might recall in a simple uh, all resistive circuit, you know, in a DC circuit, for example, you'd say P is equal to I squared times R. So we can do the same thing here. Um, we'll simply find the circulating AC current multiply by the resistor value to get the true power. We can multiply by the um, inductive reactance to get the reactive power and then either um, go through a triangle on that or more directly we can just uh, use the impedance value to find the apparent power. Okay, so what is in fact the current? How do we find the current? Well, um, since we're going to do a power calculation, we would like to do an RMS computation. So the first thing I think we should do is find out what the RMS voltage is. We have 10 volts peak, so we need to divide that by the square root of 2, which is like multiplying by 0 0.707. So when you multiply that out, your RMS voltage is approximately 7.07 .07 volts. Now we can take that and divide it by the impedance in the system to find out what the circulating current is. So we simply take VRMS, this will give us an RMS current, of course, divided by Z. Now, in this case, um, you know, we can, of course, determine the current angle, but for the power calculation, we really only need the magnitude of it. But in any case, continuing along here, I'll take our 7.07 .07 volts. Um, we're going to divide that uh, by the impedance. You can either do that as uh, 10 plus you know, J6.283 or 11. 0.81 at an angle of 32.1, your choice. And the RMS current we get out of that is 0 0.5986, and obviously the angle here is going to be a negative 32.1 degrees, right? So that's our RMS current in amps. Great. Now the power. We're simply going to do I squared times R for the true power piece, the power developed in the resistor. So just take the 0.5986, that part of it, square it, multiply that by your resistance value of 10 ohms. And that works out to approximately, rounding this off to three digits, 3.58 watts. Now we can repeat the process for the inductor. Remember the inductor, we don't call that p 
power, it's not true power, it's reactive power. We don't call it P. We use the symbol Q for that, but basically it's just I squared times X, right, rather than I squared times R. But it's still, still the same current. So I square that. Now multiply by the magnitude, don't worry about the J, just multiply by the magnitude. 6.283 ohms. And uh, the result of this will be two and a quarter var. And obviously that's inductive. Right. Volt amp reactive. Remember it's not watts. These are two different things. And finally we can figure out the apparent power s. In this case we do an i squared times z. So again, same current. What is the z value? 11.81. And that's going to get us a value of 4.23 volt amps. All right, also inductive. Since we only have the two components in there. So this is what we uh, wind up with for our uh, three results. Okay. Now, one thing we might be interested in um, determining here would be something like the power factor. Now, there's a couple of ways you can approach this. Remember, power factor can be defined in terms of uh, the cosine of the impedance angle. Our impedance angle is 32.1 degrees. Whether it's positive or negative, it, as far as the magnitude of the result is concerned, won't make any difference because cosine is symmetrical around uh, zero. The minus sign just tells us whether it's an inductive or uh, a capacitive power factor, basically a leading or a lagging power factor, lagging being a, uh, uh, an inductive power factor. So when we throw those numbers in, uh, we're going to get 0.8. Four, seven, one. That would be a lagging power factor. This can also be defined in terms of S and P, right? Power factor can also be looked at as simply the ratio of true power to apparent power, in which case we can take our 3.58 watts and divide that by the 4.23 volt amps. Um, and this will come out to approximately 0.847. It actually comes out to um, 846. And that's just a little bit of rounding error because we've rounded these values to three digits. Um, but they're virtually the same value. If you carried out all the digits on your calculator, you'd wind up with the same exact value. Of course, you could have also started from this point. In other words, you could have said, well, here's my impedance angle. Let me take the cosine of that. All right? That gives me the 0.8471, and then I can find P based on that. So in other words, S, we would simply do this calculation and just sort of rearrange the, the formula here such that P is equal to S times uh, the power factor, right? P is equal to S cosine theta or SPF, you know, however you want to say it. So I would simply plug in my value, 0.847, here, uh, S being 4.23, and we could calculate the 3.58 from that. All right? Okay, continuing, we said we want to look at the uh, power triangle. All right, so what does this wind up looking like? Well, we are going to have on the real end 3.58 watts. All right, so that's true power, again, watts. And then we have on the um, inductive side, two and a quarter. So we're going to draw that going up like this. If that's three and a half, two and a quarter is going to be uh, somewhere around here. Eyeball that. Okay. Var inductive. And then S is this vector right here. Okay, so this is S has a magnitude of 4.23, and the uh, angle here would be 32.1 degrees. 
and there's your power triangle. All right, that really solves this problem. Now, um, how would it change if we had a, let's say, a capacitor here? Not a whole lot. In other words, we would just um, figure out the appropriate capacitive reactants, go through, obviously, the sine of this angle is going to change. Um, you know, the magnitude of the current might change depending on the actual capacitance value that we have. But the process would be the same. We would still figure out P, Q, and S the same way. Um, these, of course, would be uh, capacitive rather than inductive. Um, and our power triangle would be drawn downward for the reactive part. It would be down this way. And this brings up an interesting uh, question or an interesting observation, which is the 3.58 watts is you know, real power. That's something that we can make use of, right, in, a, in let's say, a motor. Um, this circuit's actually delivering more current than it needs to to get this power. If we could somehow get rid of this part, this um, Q part right here, right, sort of nullify that, um, so that the volt amp value, the apparent power, was the same value. In other words, get this, this guy here to collapse down onto the true power, so the angle is zero, um, we'd draw less current, because after all, you know, volt amps is basically current times voltage. It's, it's um, as we said before, the apparent value. It's just sort of this naive calculation. If you had a DMM and you said, hey, what's the RMS voltage here, what's the RMS current coming in, let me multiply those two together, this is the number that you would wind up with. All right? um, you wouldn't recognize just using a DMM that there was a phase angle associated with that. So we would calculate, calculate up this 4.23 volt amps. Well, clearly the current is going to be higher than it needs to be because a portion of it is sort of being wasted, if you will, in terms of dealing with the inductor in this case. So if we can compensate for that somehow, um, we can wind up with the same true power, but drawing less current. And the idea behind that is what we call power factor correction. Now, if we have a fairly simple circuit, something like this, simple load, and it doesn't change a lot, meaning the, the current draw to the load doesn't change a lot, we can do a very simple fix. We can simply add, in this case, a capacitance. So we would simply design the capacitance in such a way that when I do my uh, I squared R, um, on paper, the easy thing to do would be to just have a capacitor in series. Practically speaking, you like to put these things across devices. For example, if it was a motor, you would put the compensation capacitor across the motor terminals rather than putting it in line. Um, but anyway, on paper, it would be easy enough to just include something back there, and we would make sure that its magnitude was the same size as, as the inductive reactants. In other words, so it was minus J6.283. Now, what that would produce is 2.25 uh, VARs capacitive, and when I would draw those, that would come down like this, right? I would get 2.2 VAR, excuse me, 2.25 VAR capacitive. So when I combine these, right, the blue and the green basically cancel out, and all we're left with is this black thing. In other words, the orange just collapses onto there, and the uh, true power and the apparent power will be the same exact value. We'll get 3.58 for this. We'll actually draw less current. We'll have a more effective uh, system overall. And we're going to take a look at that in a uh, following uh, video, along with something maybe a little bit more interesting than, than just um, you know, a resistor and inductor capacitor. But before we leave this, one other little comment. If you had a much more complicated circuit, right, you could always take this more complicated circuit. Let's say it had a big series parallel network out here. You could always do a series parallel uh, simplification on that and turn it into a lumped value. In other words, a lumped impedance value, sort of like we had over here, right? Just put that in polar value, in which case you would know the entire voltage into the system. You'd know the entire current entering into the system. And we could still do the same sort of kind of calculation um, to come up with, let's say, a power triangle. Instead of finding um, simple series calculations like we do here, we sort of do it in the second way that we were talking about. In other words, 
knowing the voltage and the current, we would immediately find S. Knowing what the um, angle would be on the impedance, we could then find the power factor, which means we could now turn around using this relation and find P. Right? So I would know S, I would know P, we could use Pythagorean theorem to find Q, and we would be all set. All right? Or you could just use the uh, Q has to equal, I'm going to write, write it down here, you could just use the Q has to equal S times the sine of theta. Right? So that's a, a slightly different way of, of doing it, right? So if you have something where you can find the current, yeah, let's just do an I squared R, I squared X, I squared Z. That's very straightforward. If it's a very complex circuit, then it's just easier to find out what S is first. You'll know what the impedance angle is. Um, and then we can, like I said, find the power factor, find P, find Q. We've got the entire power triangle. All right, so next time we'll take a look at uh, maybe a little motor action with some uh, power factor correction. Bada bing!